the global semiconductor industry is on the brink of a seismic shift, one that could forever change the economic and geopolitical landscape. And it's all because of a single, seemingly unassuming decision made in the Netherlands. This isn't just another business dispute between tech giants or a diplomatic spat between two countries. This is the start of a tectonic realignment in the world order. The stakes are higher than anyone could have imagined, and the repercussions are set to reverberate across the globe for decades to come. At the center of this drama is ASML, the Dutch semiconductor juggernaut that controls the market for extreme ultraviolet EUV lithography machines. These machines are the lifeblood of the modern semiconductor industry, required to manufacture the most advanced microchips that power everything from smartphones to artificial intelligence systems to military technologies. Without EUV machines, producing next-generation chips would be impossible. ASML's near-total monopoly on this vital technology has made it the linchpin of the United States' strategy to maintain its technological supremacy over China. In this new cold war for dominance in high-tech industries, ASML holds the key to one of the most valuable and sensitive markets on Earth. For years, Washington has leaned on its allies, including the Netherlands, to limit China's access to these critical machines. The logic is simple. If China can't produce the most advanced chips, it can't challenge U.S. technological dominance. So, in a series of increasingly stringent sanctions and export controls, the U.S. has sought to curb China's access to ASML's EUV technology. The Netherlands, despite its historical alliance with the U.S., has found itself in the crossfire of this high-stakes geopolitical game. But what no one saw coming was this. The Netherlands has defied Washington and chosen to continue its shipments of deep ultraviolet DUV machines to China, even as the U.S. presses for a complete cessation of all semiconductor exports to Beijing. This one decision, a seemingly small deviation from the expected, could alter the trajectory of the global semiconductor industry and, by extension, the entire global economy. ASML's continued export of DUV machines to China is nothing less than an act of defiance, a challenge to the very fabric of U.S. strategy. Washington had banked on the assumption that its allies, particularly the Netherlands, would fall in line, ensuring that China's rise in semiconductor manufacturing would be halted at all costs. But now, with the Netherlands resisting U.S. pressure, the question must be asked. Is this the beginning of a new era in global trade, one in which the U.S. no longer dictates the terms of the game? The U.S. position is clear. America believes that without ASML's EUV machines, China's semiconductor industry will remain forever behind the West. But there's more at play here than just technology. The Netherlands' decision to continue selling to China is a masterclass in economic brinkmanship. ASML is a national asset a technological powerhouse that provides thousands of high-paying jobs and plays a crucial role in the country's economic health. For the Dutch government, this is not simply a question of aligning with Washington or Beijing, it's a question of survival. To put it bluntly, cutting off China could decimate ASML's revenue streams. In 2023, China accounted for a staggering 46% of ASML's total sales, generating over $7 billion in revenue. Cutting off China from ASML's DUV machines would have an immediate and catastrophic impact on the company's financials. Analysts project that ASML's revenue could drop by as much as 20% in the next two years, if the Netherlands fully complies with U.S. demands. This would not only harm the company's bottom line but also put thousands of jobs at risk, causing a ripple effect throughout the Dutch economy. Faced with this harsh economic reality, the Dutch government has made a calculated decision. Protect ASML's interests in the short term while managing the broader geopolitical risks. But the stakes are higher than just the Dutch economy. What's happening in the Netherlands is part of a much larger global contest for power, with the US and China at the center. If China continues to gain access to ASML's technology, its semiconductor industry will only grow stronger, eventually allowing Beijing to become a global leader in high-tech manufacturing. ASML's machines are not just important for chip production, they are essential for China to close the technological gap with the West. With the continued shipments of DUV machines, ASML may be enabling China to develop the very technology that could eventually replace it. The U.S. has built its entire strategy on the belief that without ASML's EUV machines, China will remain locked in the past. But this assumption is already being tested. China's semiconductor industry has made significant strides in recent years, producing chips that were once thought to be beyond its capabilities. SMIC, China's top chipmaker, recently produced a 7 nanometer chip a breakthrough that defied U.S. sanctions and proved that China can innovate even under extreme pressure. This development has sent shockwaves through the global tech community, challenging the narrative that China is hopelessly behind in the semiconductor race. 
If China's ability to innovate and produce advanced chips continues to accelerate, it will have profound implications not just for the U.S. and its allies, but for the entire global economy. China's rise in the semiconductor space would undermine the technological dominance of the West, shifting the balance of power in favor of Beijing. This shift wouldn't be confined to chip production. It would affect industries across the board, from artificial intelligence to robotics to the automotive sector. China's ambitions to lead in these industries are already well underway, and if its semiconductor industry catches up to the West, it could gain a massive advantage. And that's where ASML's role becomes even more critical. The company's EUV machines are the gold standard for producing the most advanced chips, and without them, China's ambitions in high-tech manufacturing would remain severely hampered. But if ASML continues to provide China with its critical DUV machines, Beijing's push for technological self-sufficiency will only accelerate. The longer this situation continues, the more China will advance, and the less relevant ASML will become in the long run. In fact, China is already investing heavily in developing its own lithography systems, with the Big Fund 2 committing $45 billion to the cause. If these efforts succeed, China could produce its own alternative to ASML's machines by 2026, marking the end of the company's dominance in the global semiconductor market. This scenario would have far-reaching consequences. ASML, once the undisputed leader in semiconductor manufacturing technology, could find itself overshadowed by its own competition, competition that it helped enable by continuing to sell to China. And the Netherlands, which has relied on ASML's technological dominance for decades, could find itself on the losing side of a global economic battle that it didn't start. The reverberations of this battle are already being felt in other corners of the world. The European Union, which has long struggled to maintain a unified trade policy, is now facing internal divisions over how to respond to the semiconductor crisis. France and Germany have aligned themselves with the US, supporting the export restrictions on China. But behind closed doors, many European leaders are growing frustrated with the US approach. Why should Europe follow Washington's lead when American companies like Intel and AMD still receive exemptions to do business with China? Why should European firms be forced to comply with U.S. sanctions while their American counterparts operate with impunity? This growing divide could signal the beginning of a broader European rebellion against U.S. trade policy. And the impact of this rebellion could be enormous. If European nations, led by the Netherlands, begin to break ranks with Washington, it could lead to the fragmentation of the global semiconductor market. We could see the emergence of two competing tech ecosystems, one led by China and the other by the U.S. and its allies. This would be a new kind of Cold War, one fought with silicon chips instead of nuclear missiles, with economic power instead of military might. And in this new world order, the West could find itself on the losing side. The Netherlands' decision to resist U.S. pressure is more than just a trade dispute. It's a harbinger of a much larger shift in global power dynamics. As China accelerates its push for technological independence, the West is being forced to reckon with the reality that it may no longer control the future of high-tech industries. The semiconductor war is far from over, and what happens next could reshape the global order in ways no one can predict. In the end, the world is watching as the Netherlands plays its cards in this high-stakes game. And as the semiconductor battle intensifies, one thing is certain. The decisions made in the coming years will have lasting consequences for global power structures, economic alliances, and the future of technological innovation. If ASML continues to ship its machines to China, the semiconductor landscape and the global balance of power could be irreversibly altered.